recognize that this county has produced a considerable number of our judges, past and present, and also prominent lawyers in the history of this country. Therefore, I have no hesitation to accept the request that this court be named Awis Kodek Siaya High Court. And we will move towards gazetting that in honor of one of the very first indigenous lawyers of this country. It is befitting to be named at this event where we are talking about deepening access to justice in a county whose sons and daughters are playing a very, very significant law in the development of our legal system. Today, I'm also very excited as we gather here to mark an extraordinary chapter in the pursuit of justice that Siaya County can actually become the county of excellence where people come to learn about the rule of law, respect for one another, and living in harmony, in peace and unity. As we inaugurate the High Court building in Siaya, we are not merely unveiling the building of brick and mortar. We are unveiling hope, and we are unveiling a symbol of justice and of our, our unwavering commitment to bringing justice closer to the people. The launch of this High Court building is a manifestation of the ambition of the principles set in our constitution about social justice that we've been able to deduct and call it social transformation through access to justice, the vision for the judiciary. We are very keen to reduce the geographical reach of our courts to ensure that justice is within the reach of the people, wherever they may be. And CIA is leading because in all the sub-counties except to Gunja, there is a court. Very few counties can pride themselves to have as many courts as CIA has. But this is because CIA also has the most lawyers and most judges. Therefore, even Ugunja, we should work towards establishing a court once we complete the construction of, is it Eala? Yes, the next Ombi Ugunja. We make a commitment to ensure that we have a high court in every county and a magistrate's court in each constituency. And therefore, we will move now after unveiling the CIA High Court to make sure that these steps that we started of making sure that we have courts accessible to our people is a dream that becomes a reality. Uh, my Lord Justice Ouko, who is ending the biggest um, docket of ensuring we have uh, infrastructure, mentioned that it's a big dream that we have, a dream without money, but a dream we are not going to let go. Today, we extend the reach of justice beyond physical boundaries. When we launch the HE filing, in Siaya, one of the pioneer counties to adopt this digital initiative after Nairobi and Mombasa counties. So you must congratulate yourselves. The other day we had the Lord Chief Justice of England and Wales 
and he actually confessed Kenya is ahead in terms of technology uh, in accessing justice than England and Wales. So we are somewhere. So he filing in our courts, coupled with the case tracking system, forms a critical cog in our digitization agenda. Through this technological advancement, we are reducing bureaucratic bottlenecks that have historically plagued our justice system. We are bridging the gap between the people and the courts. We have been able to share with the members of the public how from wherever you are, you can be able to file your cases. And we are also bridging the digital gap between the poor and the rich by ensuring that we use the available resources within the government like the Uduma Center by establishing a desk within the Uduma Center for the judiciary where litigants can be assisted to file their documents instead of going to cyber cafes or having to be charged. We are therefore democratizing justice, making it not just a concept inscribed in our constitution, but a concept that is palpable reality for all Kenyans. Technology is not just an advancement, but a quantum leap in accessibility and efficiency within our justice system. No longer will our people be hindered because of their geographical constraints or the time-consuming journeys they have to physically make to court to file their pleadings. My learned colleagues will agree, now you do not have to travel all the way to court. You can log in and attend a virtual court in Kisumu, in Mombasa, wherever you are. The process will now be able to enable us reduce also the human interaction thereby bringing efficiency. E-firing is also an assurance that the pillars of justice stand tall because we can be able to trace when the case was filed, what action has been taken, how long it has been in court, in addition to helping us know the number of cases that are in court. It must also be tailored to meet the unique needs of different members of our society, especially the most vulnerable. Today, we make a significant stride in addressing one of our most daunting challenges by launching the sexual and gender-based violence. We designate the CIA Sexual and Gender-Based Violence Court, the second one after the one we launched in Mombasa last year, as a clear demonstration of our unwavering commitment to eradicate atrocities from our society. This specialized court is one of our strategies of ensuring that we dismantle formal, informal, and systemic barriers that prevent victims of sexual and gender-based violence from accessing justice. It is a clear and round message that we are listening, we care, and we will leave no stone unturned in our pursuit to protect the vulnerable. It is also a reaffirmation of our commitment to uphold the rights and dignity of every individual, regardless of their gender, social status, or background. And as part of our transformative journey, which began with the Constitution 2010, I am also happy to designate today a small claims court here at CIA Law Court. We have the Chief Registrar and of the Judiciary and the Registrar of the Magistrates Court, and 
we will ensure that a magistrate is gazetted immediately as an adjudicator who can start dealing with the matters of the small claims court as soon as possible. We will not even have to wait for the recruitment of the 60. We will make sure that this court is up and running, uh, if possible, by next week. <laughs> the small claims court is really a pillar of any thriving economy to ease with swiftness the way we clear commercial disputes. You cannot imagine somebody in a small business, if somebody owned them, even 200,000, that business can close down. But now with our small claims court that ensures the turnaround period is 60 days within which the matter is determined, we can salvage many, many businesses. This also will enable our entrepreneurs to focus on what they do best by innovating and creating jobs and driving the growth of economy. It is a critical cog in our drive to create an enabling environment for businesses to drive and spur the economic growth in Siaya County. We all recognize even the big businesses started small. And if they had any legal impediment that stopped them from growing, they couldn't grow. So this is why this court is absolutely timely in this Siaya County, which is the county of the future. The journey we embark on today is transformative. And we are so happy to partner with this, our distinguished governor, who is always working towards the transformation of the society. A key advocate and architect of the Constitution 2010. I think Siaya County is so lucky to have the Honorable James Olengo as your, as your governor. The judiciary will partner with uh, Siaya County to make sure that we render justice that is responsive, that is accessible, and that is people-centered. In other words, we ask ourselves, are we serving you? And this is why we value the partnership with the Court Users Committee and all other agencies that we work with, including our development partners. Thank you very much, IDLO, the Kingdom of Netherlands, and all the other donors who have supported us, including the civil society. So that we walk this journey towards a people-centered justice system, we will continue to call on you because justice belongs to all of us. Everybody wants to experience justice and fairness. It cannot be the business of the judiciary. It is the business of all of us to strive together to get closer to the people and recognize that the traditional adversarial uh, system of justice is not just the sole mechanism of solving disputes. We have to embrace the multi-door approach to justice. This approach broadens our perception of justice by accommodating alternative forms of dispute resolutions that can often be more effective, reconciliatory, and efficient in delivering justice. But when we talk about a multi-door approach to justice and encourage people to resolve disputes, we always do it with a caveat that when it comes to violations of human rights, gender-based violence, sexual violence, criminal atrocities against the human person. These are not matters that can be negotiated or settled out of the court. I would also like to emphasize the importance of court and next mediation and the alternative justice system. These are mechanisms that are helping us offer more platforms 
where parties in dispute can come together to discuss the issues candidly, fostering understanding, and providing an avenue to craft mutually beneficial solutions, especially in inheritance matters, boundary disputes, child support matters, land disputes and commercial disputes, these alternative platforms offer a chance to reach amicable solutions that preserve relationships and promote harmony within our society. The benefits of these alternative approaches to justice cannot be overstated because we save time, we save resources, we reduce the times people have to come to court, and we foster a sense of satisfaction among disputing parties who are able to restore their relationships, encourage them to see the need for them to continue with the relationship, be it commercial or even family. I therefore ask all of us to embrace the alternative doorways of justice and use them to resolve disputes. In order to get feedback as court users, we have established a court user committee in each of the court stations. Our court users committees provide a forum for the court users to engage directly with the justice system. And I really thank our champion, the chairperson from Maendeleo, uh, Patricia, MBS. That's a very high accolade. We thank you for your work and for the leadership and the inspiration you are giving to this uh, court and other court users. These committees, in fact, I will invite you to come and visit some other court users' committees to show them that we always have something to offer, even if we have retired from service and we continue to emulate and celebrate another judge and distinguished lady judge from CIA, the Honorable Lady Justice Arwoch, who has continued uh, to foster mediation, not only in Kenya, but now she is also helping South Sudan to settle their judiciary. So thank you very much for this uh, interest that you have taken with the operations of this uh, court, and also for the, the role that the committees has continued to play in identifying and addressing systemic challenges. This court that we have launched, the SGBB, will be left in your hands. It is for you to nurture it, to encourage the people in our communities to live with, with respect for one another. Why would an uncle who is entrusted with a brother or sister child take advantage of that position and defile them. So it is for us to teach the communities how to live with respect. Today we are experiencing very high numbers of SGBB cases in Siaya, but I can assure you if we all worked together and discourage these cases from happening, we will close that court and make it a small claims court because there will be no cases. But as long as the cases keep coming, we will probably open another one so that there are two and continue opening them in the other courts. But the burden and responsibility is on us to stop this vice. And I believe we can do it if we make a commitment. I encourage all of us to uh, leverage on these platforms that we have of uh, ensuring that we vibrantly participate in our local CUC and that you provide us with um, issues and insights and share concerns and really contribute to shaping the justice system because this court belongs to us. To conclude, we are making strides and we have made significant progress. Our goal 
is to put in place a judiciary that is truly your own, a judiciary that reasons, a judiciary that cares, a judiciary that serves, a judiciary that is not an obstacle but a facilitator. Together, I believe we can because we have reached this far because of the support, the commitment, and the work each one of you has put towards us getting where we are. Together, we can. Therefore, let us join hands to create a justice system that is an embodiment of our national values and aspirations. We are also keen on collaborating with the county government, like I have seen, and all our partners in our quest to increase the judiciary's footprints and make CIA and indeed the entire country, a country that is governed by the rule of law. Thank you, Governor, for reminding us. It is our duty to always guard the independence of the judiciary. And remember that it did not just happen. People fought for it, people fought, lost their lives, and we should never, never lose those gains that have been earned through the loss of life, limb, and property. So we will continue working together. We will, where we do not have land to build courts or the infrastructure, we are asking the county to allocate us land. I think we'll be asking for land in Lugunja so that we can construct a magistrate's court. And this is due to the reality that we serve the people and we hope to partner with the county government to get the public services, including the judicial services, get to the people. And as we take these steps forward, we will support the initiatives, and we pray that all of you will support these initiatives that we are launching today. Uh, I'm happy about the new initiative of greening the CIA law courts, and I was happy to plant a memorable tree I have promised Our Excellency the First Lady I'll come back so that we green uh, the courts, plant fruits so that when children come, they can eat fruits. So I will come again for a tree planting uh, ceremony and because I want to be part and parcel of greening uh, CIA County and increasing the forest cover of Siaya County. So let us make all these new avenues of justice to resolve our disputes, uh, the court and next mediation, the Ukumbi suite that we are also going to launch under the NJS auspices to create a peaceful um, and society where we can all coexist. We must never, never look back to a situation where the gains we have made under this constitutional dispensation to be clawed back. I don't want to take for granted ever in my life the importance of an independent judiciary. And I've lived to it to see the difference between an independent judiciary uh, and a judiciary. Uh, an executive control judiciary. So uh, in your able hands, and uh, those of your colleagues in the judiciary, whether you make decisions that we like or we don't like, the most important thing is we should never, never, never lose that battle again where we have to fight for a free and independent judici judiciary because it cost a lot of lives, uh, a lot of people suffered for it, and if we fail as a nation not to have a free and independent judiciary, all else will be impossible to achieve. Peace and working institutions 
uh, and, and, and that I know uh, we will strive as Kenyans to, to make sure that we continue uh, to protect the judiciary and make sure that the only power, the only power over the judiciary is the people of Kenya. They are the ones who are sovereign and de delegated the judicial authority uh, to the ju judiciary. Uh, third, uh, in conclusion, uh, my, my lady, the Chief Justice, I think it is not for nothing that we are having a lady Chief Justice in the Republic of Kenya. And we will honor and appreciate that achievement. <laughs> that within 10 years, I think 10, 12 years of the proclamation of our Constitution, we have as the head of the judiciary and president of the Supreme Court, uh, a lady of distinction. And that speaks a lot to where we have reached as a, as a nation. And uh, wherever we are, and I think this speaks to what is happening also in the county government, we, we must strive to meet the gender rule. Oki Ombaka once said in Parliament when we were discussing uh, issues of gender that uh, are reminding members of Parliament that when you walk out of Parliament and walk to your home or drive to your home, out there, and you're saying this in contradistinction to the membership of Parliament. In Parliament, probably every 10, 20 people you're meeting would be a man, but uh, as soon as you got out into the public, you are going to meet more women than, than men. And the richness of any nation and the transformation that any nation can make will depend on where we place our women in our society. And I, I know uh, what I'm saying. And your predecessor did something unprecedented. He gave an advisory to the president to dissolve parliament on account that uh, they had not reached the gender rule. We didn't have um, one third of women or more than one third of women in parliament. Now that we're chief justice, maybe it is a time to try again <laughs> to give that advisory. Yeah, because uh, if we cannot get anything right, uh, this is, since this is a constitutional edict, we may, uh, uh, in our lifetime, uh, see that uh, constitutional uh, dictat complied with. Yeah, but uh, don't be in a hurry, but in, when you retire and consider, uh, I think sometimes a little reminder to our institutions that, you know, we, we have not met the gender rule will be, will be useful. Gather today, uh, we know that we are launching today the sexual and gender based violence court. The matters perusing the affairs pretty much from the comfort of their phones. Josiah, I am also who again?
Just to open this door. Yes. And then your mother said, yes. forward with justice, forward. Forward. Forward with women rights, forward. Forward. Uh, your Lordship, uh, Chief Justice, Governor Sia, all distinguished guests. Thank you very much, Bosia J. The next segment of the program. We are delighted to join you in this auspicious occasion just to celebrate. If you think I'm joking, eh. take this 20,000. Eh, 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 yes, Auntie. Eh. Wako, eh. I'm going to take at my boarding school. Eh. Sasa <laughs> yes, eh. thank you. Now, there, my office. Uh, mm -hmm. Super. Super, notice you're growing. I've bought something here for you. Super, take this one. That, is, that is for the group. And super, mm -hmm. I have something for you here, super. 